So, welcome to you all, Sahyogis, <coughs> to this great country of yoga. Today, first of all, we have to establish our desire within ourselves that we are seekers and that we have to achieve our full growth and maturity. Today's puja is for the whole universe. The whole universe should be enlightened with your desires. Your desires should be so intense that they should emit out the pure vibrations of Mahakali Shakti, which is the pure desire of attaining the Spirit. That's the real desire. All the other desires are like mirage. You are the people who are chosen by God. Especially first to express your desire and then to achieve it. And by intense desire of purity, you have to purify the whole world, not only the seekers, but even those who are not seekers. You have to create an aura around this universe of desire to achieve the ultimate, the Spirit. Without desire this universe would not have been created. This desire of God is the one that is the Holy Ghost, is this all-pervading power, is the Kundalini within it. Kundalini has only one desire, is to be a spirit and Anything else, if you desire, the Kundalini doesn't rise. Only when it knows that this desire is going to be fulfilled by somebody who is facing the seeker, it is awakened. If you do not have the desire, no one can force you. Sahaja yogis should never try to force this desire on other people. The first ordeal we face as soon as you get your Realization is that you just start thinking of your family. You start thinking, my mother has not got it, my father has not got it, my wife has not got it, my children have not got it. You must know that these relations are worldly, 
Sanskrit is lauki. They are not alauki. They are not beyond the worldly relationships. These are worldly relations and these attachments are worldly. So if you play into that, of course, as you know, that Mahamaya Shakti allows you to play with that. You go ahead as long as you like. People bring Me all their relations, parents, this and that, and ultimately they discover that this was a very wrong thing they did. <coughs> they lost so many precious moments, so many hours, so many years, wasting their energy on people who never deserved any attention of Mother. Sooner you realize, the better, that this desire may be within you and may not be in any one of your so-called worldly relations. Makes no difference, as Christ was told that His brothers and sisters are waiting outside. So He said, who are My brothers and who are My sisters? So one has to realize that those people who involve themselves into the problems of their family all the time, and attract My attention, you must know that I am just playing about. It is of no value to you. For your ascent it is important, first of all, to have no desires, to create desire in your kith and kin. This is the first principle of establishment of Mahakali power, especially in India, where people are too much attached to their family. It's a very big problem. If you give Realization to one person, you are amazed to see that all relationship they have is with a big bunch of boots. And once you give Realization to one person, you are in for trouble. Then all the boots walk in slowly, torturing My life, wasting My energy, and absolutely disgusting. It should happen to you to understand that this is not auspicious. If you want to waste your time, I will allow you to waste your time. But if you want to have the ascent fast, first of all one must remember that these are relations which are absolutely worldly relations and this is not your pure desire. So try to separate your pure desire from your worldly desires. It does not by any means suggest that you give up your family, you give up your mother or give up your sister, nothing. But you witness them and see, as you would see anybody else, and see for yourself whether they are really desirous or not. If they are well and good, they should not be disqualified because they are your relations. It works both ways. As they cannot be qualified because they are your relations, they cannot be disqualified because they are your relations. So in Sahaja Yoga, to make your desire a pure desire, you have to get out of so many things, but for people who are attached to their family, are bound by their family, they have to see to it that they do not force Sahaja Yoga on any one of their relations, at least don't force them on Me. Now this desire within us, which is the Mahakali power which is manifesting, comes to us in so many ways. As I told you, first of all, 
it comes to us after realization because you are on search of this. To do something about our relations. <coughs> then the second desire that comes to us, that let us try to cure people who are our relations. This is the second desire. You should face yourself and see that this has happened to many of you. So, right from leprosy to any small thing like cold or sneezing, whatever they have, you think you should bring to Mother. <coughs> and all the worries of your families should be brought to Mother. Simple thing like pregnancy or sneezing, very simple things which are so natural are brought into your attention. So when you have them in your attention, I say, all right, go ahead with it. Try to solve it, if possible. But if you do not have them in your attention, they are in my attention. You leave them in my attention, I'll manage that. But then it's a vicious circle. It's a very subtle projection of the mind that things all right, then, Mother, we don't have it, this in our attention, you better look after it. That's not the way. You should have only one intense desire within a, yourself, how I become the Spirit? Have I achieved my ultimate? I ha have I risen above the worldly desires? Purified. Once you start purifying whatever falls off, I look after that. This is just an assurance, but not a guarantee. If it deserves my attention, I will definitely look after it. You have to value your attention as I value my attention. I think you have to value much more of your attention than me because I can manage many more things within myself because everything is in my attention. But you try to purify your desires away from the worldly problems that are facing. So you expand it more, then you start thinking, Mother, what about the problem of our country? All right, give me the map of your country finished. That's more than sufficient. Then purify yourself. The desire that you have, you leave it. And once you are purified, that area will be covered through your attention. It's very interesting. When you get over it, then only you can throw light. But if you are inside, you are hidden by that. Your light is hidden, there is no light emitted. You are right above that desire. Every time you get a desire, you rise about it. So your light is emitted on that wider problem that you are facing, which you think should be solved by Me. These are all My headaches which you are taking on yourself. You have to do only one thing is to become the Spirit, that's all. It's a simple thing. The rest of it is My headache. Now the <coughs> problems 
that should take your desire on the collective should be very different. <coughs> to substantiate your purity, to be fragrant with your purity, your attention should be on the other side. Now you are not facing me, you are sitting with me facing the whole world. See, the whole attitude will change. The attitude should be, what can I give? How can I give? What is my mistake in giving? I have to be more alert, where is my attention? I have to be more alert towards myself, what am I doing? What's my responsibility? You must desire that you should be pure, you should be pure desire, that means you should be a spirit. That what is your responsibility to yourself? You should desire that your responsibility to yourself should be manifested, should be complete. Then your responsibility to this Sahaja What is your responsibility to Sahaja Which is the work of God, which has started, and you are my hands. You have to do the work of God and you have to fight the anti-God elements, the satanic elements. You are not responsible for your family anymore. Those who are, are the half-baked Sahaja Yogis, I said, are useless, absolutely good for nothing. All such will drop out, their families will suffer, I know this is going to happen because now the forces are gathering in such a way that sorting out will start. Your responsibility to yourself to be the Spirit, your responsibility to Sahaja Yoga, your responsibility to understand Me better and better and better. Your responsibility to understand this mechanism that is within you. Your responsibility to understand how this mechanism works out everything. The responsibility is to how to become a guru yourself. Your responsibility to be a dignified and a glorified personality a responsibility to be a respectable person and not a cheap personality. Every one of you is worth the whole universe. If you want to rise to that height, universes of universes can be thrown away at your feet. If you want to rise to that height, to that magnitude, that is within you to prosper. But those people who still want to live on a very low level cannot rise. For example, <coughs> the Western Sahaja Yogis have certain problems of committing the sin against the mother and the Eastern Sahaja Yogis have the problem of committing sin against the father. It's not difficult at all for you to get out of it.
the attention is to be kept pure. In Sahaja Yoga, you know all the methods, how the attention one can keep it pure. If the attention is not pure, then this desire will be always attacked by all petty nonsensical things which has no meaning in your ascent. Now a person who is a good Sajogi is not bothered about clothes, what others say to him or what others are talking to him, how they are behaving towards him and the attention is not on that criticism that this person is like this, that person is like that. Nor there is the aggressiveness of anyone else, because nobody is the other. But the problem is when I say that, no one thinks that I am saying about you, each person's. Those who are aggressive take the other role and those who are non-aggressive think the other way. Like I say something, for a person who is aggressive, the non-aggressive immediately thinks of the person who is aggressive, not about himself. You immediately start shifting your mind to other person, finding faults with other people. So this desire becomes gradually lower and lower and lower because of the loads that are put on it. So the alertness is very important, complete alertness. Satarkata, that we should keep our attention purely for the sustenance of our pure desire. Desire comes from your heart and you are so built that <laughs> your Brahmarandra is also the heart. If you don't have a clean heart, this won't keep clean. There are people who think if they talk about Sahaja big and all that, they are all right. They are cheating themselves. If the heart is not open, then this is closed. So try to open your heart by projecting it, projecting it. I hope today when you do this puja and you do the worship of Mahakali and this special yagya, we will definitely establish this aura and enlighten the universe. But your outlook should be how much I have contributed to this. Am I still thinking of other people? Am I still thinking of my petty small problems? Or I am thinking of my spirit? So the left side starts and ends with Sri Ganesh. Sri Ganesh has only basic one quality, that he is completely surrendered to his mother. He does not know any other god. He does not even know his father. He only knows his mother and completely surrendered to her. But this pure desire has to have the action 
and about which I'll tell you later as we will be having more pujas and more pujas. But today let us establish ourselves <coughs> into that pure desire to be the Spirit. Now, as it is with the Western mind, we'll say, how? It's always come, how to do it. Should I tell you? It's very simple. Adi Shankaracharya wrote Viveka Chudamani <coughs> and so many other books of treatises. And then all these big intellectuals got after his life. And they said, <coughs> how this and how that and how? He said, forget these people. Then he wrote, Saundarya Lahari, just the description of his mother and his devotion to her. <coughs> and every couplet that he wrote is a mantra. It is not the surrender of your mind, through your mind, but the surrender of your heart. is absolutely the surrender of your heart. Western Sajogis know very well how there have been attacks and attacks of negativity on them, especially when horrible people like Freud came to destroy their basic, the roots, and how the West accepted it, blindfolded, <coughs> and put them on the path of hell. All that has to be brought out, that is all nonsense, is wrong, absolutely against God, it's anti-God activity. Then you will realize that you will fight fully by saying this is the destruction of our basics, our roots. When our Mother is the source of everything that is sublime, noble, all that is nourishing, all that is elevating, emancipating, you are cutting us from our roots. When he dealt with, I think, animal-like creatures, and he wants all of you to go down to that low level of hu human beings, which exist as pathological cases, I don't know. So it is important for you to understand all the attacks that came on you and be alert, and don't be identified with any one of these. Last, I would say, you have come to this country to see the roots and not the shoot. Change your attitude of Western star. Telephones are no good, you cannot get any telephones done. Postage is horrible, railways are worst. I shouldn't say because we are in a railway. <laughs> but the people are excellent. They know what is dharma. They are not being attacked somehow or other because it being the Kundalini. The Ganesha is sitting here, how dare anybody attack? This great Maharashtra has got eight Ganeshas protecting them. I don't know if these Maharashtrians know this fact. And so many Marutis. So who can attack this country? 
there is no negative attack except that they themselves are a rather money-minded sort. That's the only curse they have. If they can get out of it, they are great people. So, you have come to this country not to enjoy the comfort <coughs> of the West, but the comfort of the Spirit. So, to change your attitude towards India, I don't mean Air India by any chance. This is a wrong idea that you come by Air India because you are a Sajogi, not at all. Air India has nothing to do with surgery. All our railways, all our everything, they have nothing to do with surgery, so far. So you be patriotic and use your own airlines, for heaven's sake. <coughs> but when you arrive here, you will see that the people are too innocent, they can't understand Freud, you can't talk to them, it's beyond their minds. They are a higher type of people in this respect now because they are not attacked. While you are higher in a way that though you are attacked, you are out of it. You have just turned your faces and you are on the other way. That's something great. So, you would also have a confidence, there are many people who believe the same way as you believe, in this big country where there is such a big population to support you. So you shouldn't feel lost. Thus, today we have to start this puja on Mahakali <coughs> and. It's the day of the Gauri, we can say, and Ganesh Gauri's day today, though according to the scheduled time it may not be. But according to me, let us establish within ourselves on a subtler level the desire to be pure and to be cleansed out all the barriers and unclean things that are within us, to desire to be great Sahajogis, <coughs> desire to be responsible Sahajogis and desire to be surrendered to your Mother. It's not difficult. That is the easiest, the last one is the easiest. Because what you surrender, I don't want anything from you except that you accept my love. Surrendering just means you open your heart to accept my love. Give up this ego, that's all, and it will work out. I'm sure it's going to work out. I'm trying to push myself into your hearts and I'll definitely settle down there. <coughs> Mahakali has a special capacity to weep because she is left-sided. When she is helpless and she cannot act, she weeps. This is the only manifestation of Mahakali is that she desires and if she doesn't get her desire, enacted, then she just weeps. That's the only thing she can do in helplessness, isn't it? And sometimes when she's full of love, as I've seen you today, all of you coming down here and all these people sitting down here, when she cannot express herself fully with full heart, also she feels that joy pouring as tears. May God bless you for today's puja. I hope all of you will take it in such a way that the subtlest of subtle will be awakened within you, the sensitivity every way and the love which culminates into joy, love that flowers into the fragrance of joy.
will manifest in today's puja. May God bless you.